Hi guys, so you might have heard of ISO 19650 already. It's going to be pretty important in the future of engineering because we're moving into the realm of BIM delivery. Um, we won't be able to rely on the traditional 2D drawings anymore going forward. Clients are going to want it more and more. So I've put together a five minute summary, uh, mostly for my benefit, but hopefully other people find it useful. So as an overview, this is the 22nd version, 22nd summary. I've grouped it into some logical areas here, and this is the basis of the standard. So firstly, you've got when, why, who, and how digital information and BIM is delivered. You've got the required level of detail of the, that information, how information flows from one party to the next, delivery team and management, production and delivery of information, and providing a CDE, which is a common data environment. So that's, in a nutshell, what ISO 19650 addresses in total. So going into the first section, um, a lot of this is aimed towards the specifier or the client um, of the project. So you've got the need or the business layer. So why is the project needed? You've got the vehicle to solve the need or the information layer, which is where they might start talking about BIM um, and what sort of models they want for delivering the project or to hand over for the asset management um, at the end of the project. Then you've got tools frameworks and systems to produce the encapsulate the information which is the technology layer and that's um, what actual tech they might use for example programs um, or file formats etc and finally the ways of working with the technology layer so how will the programs and formats uh, work together and what standards are required for them so the next section, the standard details, is the required level of detail. So again, this is aimed at the uh, party that wants to build the project, but it's pretty important for us to understand as engineers. So they've got, they're supposed to communicate level of information need for each deliverable. So that's really important. So how much actual information do they need? So they can't just say drawings anymore. With a BIM model, it's a lot more than just 2D drawings or just a model of geometry. There's all sorts of other information. The value of the information and the likely cost to create it. So how much does the client expect that level of information is going to cost, which is really uh, valuable information for an engineer when the information is to be developed and delivered, so program basically, who and how information will be managed, and what formats the information is for in. The next section is how information flows between parties. There's four principles to this area. Information is used throughout all stages of the asset life cycle to inform decision making, so in other words, the information that's generated through the project is going to be um, used to inform decisions as milestones are undertaken or reached. The information is specified, produced and delivered progressively. The most relevant party should be responsible for creating and managing the information related to their scope. So in other words, structural engineer produces a structural model and they're responsible for the managing that model. Information will be subject to collaboration and be exchanged in open formats through the use of a common data environment or CDE. So the last section is CDE, that's pretty important, but another thing that going forward is pretty important with this standard is it has to be an open format that integrates with a common data environment. So you, it's going to be challenging in the future if you want to use your own format type 
um, something to think about. Got to use standard tools. So the next area of the standard deals with team and management. Um, tries to clarify the functions and responsibilities for information management and it doesn't specify that specific roles should be tied to those responsibilities so people can have multiple responsibilities etc. Now the next part's important in that it defines competency um, and it talks about the ability to fulfill the information requirement obligations of in the production of deliverables so in other words it says doing a good job is um, being able to provide the information and it's referring to the level of information need ref that I talked about earlier um, so that's the competency that, that it's that it's after um, it also highlights the importance of reviews by one of three groups. So most people would be uh, familiar with that. There's the appointing party, the delivery team, and then a th nominated third party. Uh, and it recommends implementation, implementation of reviews under a framework agreement. In other words, um, verification, um, certification, and all that sort of stuff. And it doesn't prescribe any specific um, time frames or cutoff points or anything like that. It just says it just leaves it as considered appropriate. So the next section is production and delivery of information. This is a couple of sections in the standard, but summarised here. This includes principles of information to be used for container-based collaborative working. Now that sounds pretty complicated. There's actually a section in the standard, so I recommend going through and having a look at those points. But basically it's a way of working uh, where information is in containers, so it's sort of a bit hard to explain. A concise uh, responsibility matrix is, is, is essential, so in other words, who's doing what. And it recommends um, or alludes to providing that as a response to the brief for the project so that the engineer will have to put that together and then it's got a workflow um, that suggests um, or, or principles of a workflow um, that should ensure a CDE system is implemented so again we'll talk about that later establish appropriate uh, collaboration systems and processes consider how the project is composed and scoped and ensure information sharing agreements are put in place to govern ownership, security, and usage rights. So some of that was touched on before. And the final section is uh, providing this CDE or common data environment. So what is it? It's a, it's a digital hub for project actors to collect, manage, and disseminate relevant in approved information in a managed environment. So it can be both a database um, of all the information and have a transmittal capability to maintain an audit trail. So in other words, not just hold the information but be able to issue that information as revisions with dates and approvals and all that sort of stuff. Interestingly, it doesn't prescribe it but it suggests it. So I suppose depending on the size of the project. Um, the CDE um, should have a process uh, by which the information is managed and that's known as workflow. And the information within the CDE should have work, either be work in progress, shared, published or archived. So in a nutshell, the CDE is just a big area for information to be held in a way that can be controlled um, with version control um, and everyone has access to.
Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.